cannot look at a divana. So triple bana I read that I triple bana Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prestaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Sarasvati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Sonyavadi Pashtachari Shattarine Ha 
His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Goswami Maharaja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. His Confound Acharya Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Namacharya Srila Rida Astakur Ki Jai. Prem Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadathar Sri Vasari Gora Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai. Sri Sri Radha Krishna Gopa Gopinath. Shyama Kunda Radha Kunda Giri Govardhan Ki Jai, Maya Pudam Ki Jai, Vindavanam Ki Jai, Ganga 
Devi Kita, Yamuna Devi Kita, Tulasi Devi Kita, Bhakti Devi Kita, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees, all glories to the assembled devotees. Shri Shri Rata Gopinata Ki.
Krishna. <clears throat> Thanks everybody for being here. <clears throat> On the board we have uh, words of a devotee who became a demon. So we will study demons, demons instructions or <laughs> today <clears throat> from well I'm a demon who is trying to be, become a devotee yeah. with your uh, blessings uh, yeah. <clears throat> by the way who is uh, who has such a nice Calligraphy script, who is writing the verses? Oh, yeah? No, oh, very good. <clears throat> some tem temples you can see it's almost like a, some uh, uh, calligraphy meditation. Such nice uh, writing. We, we, we know. Th yes, definitely. <laughs> thank you. I was worried about it. Yes, thank you. <laughs> uh, even uh, Chaitanya M Mahaprabhu praises uh, Rupa Goswami's uh, handwriting. He says, Your uh, calligraphy is like a string of pearls. Jai Radha Madhava Kunjai Hari. Krishna, 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 Krishna,
is hidden here so that uh, uh, nobody notices it I'm looking oh, what's it? I'm, uh, you can see looks like I'm looking at the book <laughs> Not at, the, at the clock <clears throat> so <clears throat> to indicate that we are here not for any material purpose not even for some sattvic purpose but for a transcendent purpose for the pleasure of Krishna before every class we say Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya <coughs> Today we are reading verses 11 and 12 from chapter 19 of Canto 8. The chapter is called The Lord Begs Charity from Bali Maharaj. <clears throat> Very paradoxical uh, Leelas. <clears throat> the all-powerful and the all-powerful Lord, the Lord to whom everything belongs, uh, he's begging for something. And before that he glorified the demon, and then, and then he cheated the demon, and then he uh, accused the, uh, the demon, and then he blessed him more than uh, even great devotees are blessed. In, in the fifth canto, Bali Maharaj says that uh, Indra could have asked anything from uh, Krishna, and what did he ask for? Just for some uh, heavenly planets. What a a uh, stupid request. Uh, he could have easily asked for pure devotional service. So Bhagavatam is very interesting. Uh, a tra transcendental Purana, it's not just black and white, not, it's beyond duality, and so Bhagavatam gradually trains us to get uh, above the duality, good and bad, demons and uh, suras, uh, but uh, 
consistently trains us and tests us to see <coughs> um, how everything is uh, um, Krishna's energy, Krishna's expansions. Uh, <coughs> and so beginning from Canto 6, we have a demon who is a great devotee, who again becomes a demon, and still he is greater devotee than the greatest devotee, Indra. So uh, to push us off the mental uh, binary dual uh, platform so that we grow up. It's, it's the characteristic of a teenager, right? Uh, no offense to teenagers. <laughs> I mean, Krishna is a teenager. <laughs> but uh, uh, they, they even call it uh, tending to some extremes. <clears throat> so everything should be either black or white. So Bhagavatam is beyond this. <clears throat> So verse 11 I will uh, read myself because there is no purport and then verse 12 has a purport <coughs> where Prabhupada <coughs> discusses whether God is dead or not. And um, of course we think we all know very clearly God is not dead but don't fall asleep yet. <laughs> <coughs> so text 11 Satam niketam parimrishya shunyama pasyamana kupito nanada Kshmam dyam disha kamivaram samudran vishnum vichin vannada darshavira Upon seeing that the residence of Lord Vishnu was vacant Hiranika Shipu began searching for Lord Vishnu everywhere. Angry at not seeing him, Hiranika Shipu screamed loudly and searched the entire universe, including the surface of the earth, the higher planetary systems, all directions, and all the caves and oceans. <clears throat> but Hiranika Shipu, the greatest hero, Vira, did not see Vishnu anywhere. So again, um, he saw uh, the Vaikuntha within this uh, material universe uh, without Vishnu, and the question arises, how could a demon enter Vaikuntha? So I will just repeat that comment uh, from Vishnu Chakrani Thakur, that uh, sometimes Krishna allows some uh, non-devotee ascetics, uh, sages, and even demons sometimes to enter Vaikuntha uh, for getting some darshan. Uh, why? Just for the fun of it. Just to show the, uh, the Vaikuntha residents, hey look, you see, did you see the, those kinds of creatures? There, there are creatures like that too. <coughs> like, he says like having a zoo or a circus visiting a city. <laughs> If I can ask, because it was point from yesterday, I was thinking about that, you know. Can you just give a reference where is it coming from? For it's a little bit like a... It shows kind of... Okay, it can be humorous, but huh? in the same, it can be humor, humor. But at the same time, it can be offense. When you laugh at someone, and if you can just reflect on Rupa Goswami's instance, when he was meditating and he was laughing, and there was a kind of a, a person was going uh, in front, mm -hmm. which was having problem, yeah. and then he needed to go to Krishna's vision. So I was thinking just if, like, like in that context, is, if you can mm -hmm. elaborate, maybe I'm getting it wrong. Uh, yes, thank you for asking the question even before the lecture. That's even before the text. That's <laughs> I'm attempting. <laughs> Good. Uh, yes, uh, and thank you for giving me the wonderful opening to um, um, say uh, that uh, I uh, feel like uh, I am that type of a weird animal uh, that. Uh, Krishna puts uh, on, uh, on the stage, for, for, this is what Vishnachakaradi Thakur says, um, 
mama ratna vanik bhavam ratnanya parichin vitaha santu santu jihremi nasva svanta vinoda I think it's a very important verse for every lecturer to learn because he says that uh, uh, <coughs> even though I know nothing about jewels, <coughs> uh, I'm uh, taking on the role of a jewel merchant. But I will not uh, let shame and embarrassment stop me. Not, uh, <coughs> I will not uh, stop because of shame, because if nothing else, at least uh, I will give one or two laughs to the wonderful devotees. At least they will have somebody to laugh uh, at. <laughs> that, oh, look at this guy, he's so proud, he's so... <laughs> he's so, <coughs> so, uh, so therefore, that's my justification. At least, santu uh, <coughs> santu, uh, may the devotees santo, santa uh, laugh hasanto jihremi uh, na I will not uh, be ashamed because by this laughing by making myself a, a joke uh, like this uh, at least I do the wonderful act of uh, making them laugh <laughs> I will give them fun it will be vinoda it will be a fun some fun for them so <clears throat> uh, I uh, want to uh, do the forbidden thing, the thing that's usually done by devotees before the classes, uh, but not ever recommended by uh, any uh, teacher training course or by any uh, speaking skills course. I want to apologize again <laughs> that I hear uh, pontificating, you know, to all the senior devotees that, yeah, that's how you, that's how you do bhakti. You know, that's, that's the science. This is how you, <laughs> I'm sorry, at least I will uh, <clears throat> um, maybe cause one or two laughs and you, then being exalted devotees, you will be merciful to a, a person who is uh, covered with pride. There is another verse in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Vaigunya kita kalita paisunya vrana pidita dainyarna veni magnoham chaitanya vaida masraye. I am um, bitten, always eaten by insects and germs of uh, material defects. And uh, I am burning uh, in uh, co covered with boils uh, of uh, enviousness. Therefore, I will immerse myself in the ocean of humility. So I'm not humble, but I immerse myself in the ocean of humility. Not my humility, but somewhere it's there, this humility. And uh, take shelter of Dr. Chaitanya. Mm -hmm. Chaitanya Vaidya Masraya. So <coughs> we have a very expert doctor. So he is <laughs> He will, he will help. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, regarding this quote, I, I will try to find it. Maybe after the class, if you have time, I will, I will give you uh, the quote. Uh, as far as I remember, it is uh, mentioned when the Kumaras visit the Vaikuntas. As far as I remember, it's, it's there. But I will, I will try to find. Uh, it's Vishwanath Chakraditakur's comment uh, on, on the Bhagavatam. Uh, when someone, some of these... Uh, uh, personalities come there. So uh, it does sound uh, condescending to these sages and some of these sages are uh, actually very elevated and even uh, devotees to some extent uh, like Durvasa Muni or the Kumaras, they already are devotees to some extent or eternally they are devotees so it may, or even if they are not devotees, at least they are exalted personalities. We see Vishnu himself, he uh, offers all respects to the Kumaras. He says, if I am famous, it's only because I take dust from the Brahmanas, uh, from, the feet, uh, from the lotus feet of the Brahmanas like you on my head, Krishna says. That's the only reason why, why so many people uh, know about me, because I am respectful of people like you. <laughs> At least, or 
It doesn't say respect. I, I, I take, uh, I take uh, dust from your feet on my, on my, on my head. S so, uh, yeah, we should not be disrespectful. Still, uh, it, it's the question that has to be answered. How can a person who is not 100% transcendental, who is not 100% in pure love of Godhead, how can such a person enter uh, this transcendental kingdom? It's a very puzzling question. In fact, it's beyond. If you read Brahma Samhita, for example, it's protected uh, by so many uh, layers of protection. One of them, the tridents of Lord Shiva, and uh, Lord, Shi Lord Shiva is the lord of the false ego. That's why also Vrindavan is surrounded by Shiva temples, and uh, Sanan Goswami every day would worship Gopi uh, Gopishwar, uh, Gopishwar Mahadev, Bankandi Mahadev, because he's being the lord of false ego, he can help us remove the false ego and actually enter the Holy Dhamma. Not geographically, not physically, but uh, because as long as I think I'm there to enjoy, I, I, I will not enter. I may be physically and geographically there, but not uh, really there. <coughs> so we need the blessings of uh, Lord Shiva. So to answer that doubt, uh, this is the comment given. So this is one of those, uh, one of those uh, comments that can be very conveniently used, used uh, either to feel superior to others, but we have so many verses in the Shastra, so many places in the Shastra, which we can misuse to feel superior to, uh, to others. Oh, I'm, uh, I chant Hare Krishna, I'm the best. I'm, uh, uh, I know about Kevala Bhakti, I'm, I'm the top of the top. Uh, and, and all these other, these, are, these karmis, you know. I remember first time I read Bhagavad Gita, I was so happy I found some, uh, such a, an insulting term. Uh, some new insult, insult to use against my uh, brother-in-law. <laughs> oh, he's a karmi. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a, that, it, that's a very nice, good uh, insult. I can call him a karmi. Uh, of course, one devotee uh, once told me, uh, "Why do you call them karmis? How do you know? <coughs> Maybe some of them are gyanis." Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. Yes, okay. <laughs> Is called slang. Actually, I, I think this is this is uh, some of the things that uh, is called communication. The communications uh, representatives discuss uh, how we talk to non-devotees. Do we use the is slang, and how do we? Which terms do we use? So uh, it's one of those instructions that is not to be misused for feeling superior, and it's just the answer to the. Uh, a philosophical question. I'm sorry, it's, uh, it's becoming extended, but uh, this is a very important point. There are in, in philosophy, there are two kinds of instructions. One is metaphysical, another is uh, ethical. So ethical is how you should act. And metaphysical is what is what. And our problem is we mix or misuse. We, use, we take metaphysical, I, we are not the body, and, uh, and uh, we use it for action. Uh, Prabhu, it's your karma. <laughs> Prabhu, you are in Maya. Uh, or like my friend told his mother uh, in his first days in Krishna consciousness. She said, she said, son, I wish you well. And he says, yeah, I'm not your son, you are not my mother. <laughs> so, Metaphysically, it's correct, yes, but I mean, <laughs> it's for, for a mother to hear <laughs> something like this. It's very tough. Uh, so, Ramanuja Acharya uh, mentions this in the second chapter of the Gita. He says that when Krishna says nobody can kill or be killed, it's not an ethical instruction to justify killing. It's a metaphysical description of some uh, metaphysical truths, and it's not to be taken as an uh, ethical uh, injunction for how we should act. So, in terms of ethical injunctions, we know that mercy is one of the four legs of religion. Uh, and uh, again, I mentioned that Hoddle, uh, coach of UK football team, who was fired just because he said he believes in karma and reincarnation. So it was taken as him being cruel to people handicapped. So it's, and, and as, as devotees, oftentimes we have this, uh, this problem. Oftentimes we don't have the luxury of having grown in an Indian 
uh, how do I say, mature environment. And so therefore we take metaphysical statements to be ethical injunction how you should act. Uh, we, we, we mix, because if I grow up in a good ethical envi environment, a uh, mature ethical environment, I will understand, okay, this is a metaphysical instruction. Doesn't mean I hate my wife. Doesn't mean I hate my husband. Doesn't mean I, uh, uh, because they are Maya or something. It's a metaphysical instruction. Ethically, I should be merciful. The whole uh, Veda is based on mercy. It's, uh, again, Prabhupada says, what our mission is Sarve Bhavam to Sukhina. And it was Neon Prabhupada. So, uh, may everybody be happy. He says, this is our, 60 times he repeats, you see in the Veda base. Uh, our mission is, may everybody be happy. Not uh, that everybody is a demon, <laughs> and <laughs> youth and rascal. <laughs> no, may everybody, and, uh, unless they uh, bring donations to our temple. <laughs> and and sign, sign into the, we don't even have the membership book usually, so, but at least you may think like this. Is this okay? So different between ethical and metaphysical instructions. It's in, in general, it's a very important uh, distinction to see between different instructions. <coughs> so to verse uh, 12. Hirani <coughs> Kashipu couldn't find Vishnu in Vaikuntha, <coughs> and what does he say? Text 12. Let us chant. Apashaniti hovacha. Apashaniti hovacha. Mayam vishtamidam jagat. Mayam vishtamidam jagat. Bratriha megatonunam. Bratriha megatonunam. Yato navartate pumam. Yato navartate pumam. Apashaniti hovacha. Apashaniti hovacha. Mayam vishtamidam jagat. Bratriha megatonunam. Yato navartate puman. Next, please. <laughs> Apasyam, not seeing him, not seeing him. And you can see it's the main uh, um, main pr uh, argument the demons give, uh, give. Where is your God? Where, where can I see him? So he didn't see him. Iti, in this way. In this way. Ha uvacha, uttered. uttered. Maya, Maya, by me. Anveshtam has been sought. So he's even searching for God. Idam, the whole. Jagat, universe. But he's searching outside. He's searching externally, physically. We should not make the same mistake. Bratriha, Lord Vishnu who killed the brother. Me, my, my, 
Gata. Must have gone. Nunam. Indeed. Yata. From where? Na. Not. Avartate. Comes back. Puman. A person. Translation and purpose by His Divine Grace, Srila Prabhupada. <coughs> Unable to see him, Hiranyakashipu said, I have searched the entire universe, but I could not find Vishnu, who has killed my brother. Therefore, he must certainly have gone to that place from which no one returns. In other words, he must now be dead. So he made the mistake of making me his enemy. Ha ha, I must be dead now because of this. Perfect. <clears throat> Atheists generally follow the Bauda philosophical conclusion that at death everything is finished. Hirana Kashipu, being an atheist, thought this way. Because Lord Vishnu was not visible to him, he thought that the Lord was dead. <clears throat> As devotees, we should not make mistake, this mistake also. <clears throat> Even today, many people follow the philosophy that God is dead. But God is never dead. Even the living entity, who is part of God, never dies. For the soul, there is never birth or death. This is the statement of Bhagavad Gita 220. Even the Ordinary living entity never takes birth or dies. What then is to be said of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the chief of all living entities? He certainly never takes birth or dies. Ajopi San Avyayat Ma Bhagavad Gita 4.6. Both the Lord and the living entity exist as unborn and inexhaustible personalities. Hmm. We are inexhaustible. At least theoretically. <laughs> <laughs> so if I feel exhausted, maybe <laughs> it's not me, or I'm somewhere on the wrong platform. <laughs> Thus, Hirani Kashipu's conclusion that Vishnu was dead was wrong. As indicated by the words, Yato Navarta Te Puman, there is certainly a spiritual kingdom, and if the living entity goes there, he never returns to this material world. Also beautiful how Srila Prabhupada brings this negative into a very positive uh, point, a place from where you don't return. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita 4.9. Tektva deham punar janma naiti maameti sorjuna. Materially speaking, every living entity dies. Death is inevitable. But, and in, in, in Europe, if you were a philosopher, uh, until maybe even a hundred or two hundred years ago, you were supposed to have a skull on your bookshelf to remind you, we all die. Memento mori, remember about death. Of course, according to our philosophy, it's not very clean to have a bone or skull. Maybe, <coughs> maybe we should have a plastic one or something. <laughs> Remember, memento mori. <coughs> it's also the um, success uh, principle. Yeah? Stephen Covey or whoever they say. Yeah? Uh, begin with the end in mind. Uh, think about how you want to be remembered. Act as if you are going to die now. <coughs> Principle of spiritual life. Death is inevitable. inevitable. <coughs> but those who are karmis, jnanis, and yogis return to this material world after death, whereas bhaktas do not. It's even there in the Yoga Sutra, those who attain liberation without proper, complete knowledge, they return after uh, couple manvantaras, ten manvantaras, hundred manvantaras. So I think the maximum there was uh, uh, two years of Brahma. 
there's a quote from Vayu Purana establishing this fact that they are liberated because they didn't have the positive knowledge about what's there on, on the spiritual side, they come back. <clears throat> of course, if a bhakta is not completely perfect, he takes birth in the material world again, but in a very exalted position, either in a rich family or a family of the purest brahmanas, shuchinam, shimatam, gehe, just to finish his development in spiritual consciousness. So that's uh, so many of devotees. We are coming again to complete. Those who have completed the course of Krishna consciousness and are, interesting, Prabhupada says this is the course of Krishna consciousness, and are free from material desire, return to the abode of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Here, the same fact is stated, yato navartate puman. If your Prabhupada even takes the demon's words as a confirmation. Any person who goes back home, back to Godhead, does not return to this material world. <coughs> Krishna is transcendental. Krishna is uh, beyond the gross uh, senses. <coughs> May I ask, uh, can you please uh, put on the, uh, the screen? I have this thing here. <coughs> So you see, Hiranyakashipu is super powerful. He has searched the whole universe. He could even come to Vaikuntha. He's not an ordinary person. Vishnacha Thakur says also that uh, uh, they uh, are giant Vijay. And you can see, they haven't uh, done uh, so much in this life, but they are so powerful. They are extremely powerful. He says, this is the uh, remnant of the power of a Vaikuntavasi that even covered, even in the body of a demon, even coming in Maya, even coming in the material world, even under heavy curses, uh, they are so powerful. It's, it's, uh, you can only imagine what's the power of uh, a pure, a personality in Vaikuntha, the power and uh, opulence and beauty and all the attributes <coughs> of the soul in the pure state. <coughs> so this powerful Hiranyakashipu, he has searched the whole universe. So he has searched not only the gross geographical locations, uh, in, in fact, uh, he could not just search, uh, I mean, you cannot uh, explore the universe just geographically because some planets are uh, in different, uh, dimen different dimensions, in, in, uh, on different levels. So you have to be on a different level. In one place, Srila Prabhupada calls, uh, calls Hiranyakashipu a great jnani. So he was a mystic. He was, he was powerful. So he searched not only the gross locations, he also searched the subtle locations. He even is stated here to have visited Vaikuntha. He has been in Vaikuntha. <coughs> but he didn't see, he couldn't find. Of course, you remember, where did, uh, where did uh, Vishnu hide? In the heart, yeah, the last place he would he would look <laughs> in the heart, <laughs> anywhere but uh, but in, inside. So he couldn't couldn't find. Uh, we, we, you may also uh, probably have um, seen how sometimes people come to the temple, in the temple, and sometimes uh, you come to the temple. You see the deities. You see uh, the beauty of the deities, and you. And sometimes you get some extra mercy and you look at the lords and they are so beautiful and you feel, wow, they are, the Lord is amazing, the Lord is incredible. 
uh, so sometimes Krishna gives you some extra mercy, sometimes Krishna doesn't hide much, sometimes uh, you have done some uh, seva and you have seen a little more, uh, you so, sort of earned a little mercy and you can, uh, you can get some, some more uh, revelation from Krishna's side. And then the same amazing deities, the same amazing deities are on the altar and then you see some guests come and they hardly give a cursory glance uh, to the altar and turn around and they don't, they don't, they don't see. Have you seen? I, in Vrindavan I see this very often. They just come and they're pious, they're nice, and they just, you know, like, like glance uh, over our beautiful Radha Shema Sundar, turn around. They didn't see. Like, you come in front and sometimes you cannot break your eyes away, turn, uh, bring your eyes away. It's, you are, it's, it's, it's so absorbing, so, such a striking, attractive beauty. And uh, the same deed is, uh, people who are not devotees, they come, they look at, and they don't see. I know some devotees uh, said that the first time they came to the temple, they didn't see the deities. They saw the flowers, <laughs> they saw maybe the altar, the, I don't know, the decorations, but they didn't see the deities. Like completely. Like completely. They didn't even notice that there is a deity, there, there are deities on the altar. <laughs> uh, or, yeah, so it, it's not uh, external, it's not so uh, cheap. Or, <clears throat> uh, I have this experience, devotees came from uh, Vrindavan and they brought uh, pictures of Radha Shema Sundar, <coughs> Gurnitai and Krishna Balaram. And, <coughs> and, and they were saying, oh, Radha Shema Sundar is so beautiful, oh, uh, the, the deities are so wonderful, so amazing. And then I remember, um, I was looking at the picture and you're like, yeah, okay, yes, but I, I was not uh, so uh, uh, astounded. I, I didn't feel so, so, so moved by, uh, by this picture. I, I didn't un understand how, why do they say that they are so beautiful? Okay, this is probably proper to say that they are beautiful, but okay. And only after I actually visited Rindavan, only after I actually uh, personally bowed, bowed down to Radha Shema Sundar and, and have seen Radha Shema Sundar, that uh, I could uh, see, oh, this is incredible, they are so beautiful. They are uh, practically n not even pretending to be deities. <laughs> yeah. And then after going, then even I look at a picture or on uh, now we are fortunate we have the uh, internet darshan, so to say, how to say, uh, every day there is uh, either webcam, webcam usually is not so uh, high quality in some cases, but uh, there are devotees who take pictures and put put online, and then if, even like this, you look and and, and still you f you see, oh, they are so beautiful. It, it's it's amazing. So uh, before that, I, I looked and I, I <coughs> didn't see even as a devotee, so to say, so-called devotee, <coughs> aspiring devotee. But uh, <coughs> I I couldn't see. But then after personally coming and then personally seeing and maybe personally doing some service. Only after that, uh, I couldn't bring my eyes away. Or I remember in one temple I came, and these are very, very famous deities, very wonderful, and so many devotees love these deities. And I came in front of these deities, and I was standing in front of those deities, and I felt like, uh, mm, okay. Like, you know, this, this uh, uh, English or American expression, meh, you know, M-E-H, you know, like, Mm, yeah, all right. Like nothing special. And then I, and then I thought, why? Uh, I mean, people are so connecting to, uh, feeling such a deep connection to the deities uh, in this temple. What? Why don't? Why don't I feel it? And then I uh, just started offering prayers to the deities, and it was as if, as if uh, the deities looked at me 
and uh, showed themselves to me. So as soon as I offered some uh, prayers, as, as soon as I actually uh, tried to address them personally as persons with devotional uh, attitude, Krishna, he, from his side, he, he I, I don't have the power, but from his side, he can reveal himself. So this is the uh, philosophy of Krishna consciousness. This is philosophy of bhakti. It's uh, <clears throat> uh, avarohapanta. It's a descending process. It's a process of mercy. So from our side, we do, uh, in, in other words, we need to attract his mercy. It, it's a process of revelation. Uh, Rupa Goswami says, Atak Shri Krishna Namadi Nabavet Grahyam Indriyai Sevon Mukha Hiji Vadao Bhakti Shastri is? Svaya Eva Spuratyada Yes. <coughs> uh, you cannot uh, you cannot uh, conceive or perceive Krishna by gross uh, Krishna or his name or his form or his qualities uh, or anything else connected to Krishna by the blunt material senses. So it's true. By my senses I cannot see Krishna. By my ear I cannot even, by my tongue I cannot say the name of Krishna. Really. By my ear I cannot hear the name of Krishna. By my intelligence I cannot uh, even uh, understand or conceive Krishna. That's true. Nabhavet Grahim. But, Sevan uh, Mukhe, if you show uh, some uh, attitude of uh, wanting to please Krishna, of wanting to serve Krishna, something that attracts Krishna, and that's Bhakti. Oh. Oh, oh, oh. Yes. Okay, yes. We have been saved by Krishna. <clears throat> uh, can you please uh, adjust the sharpness? Okay, you can see it's also not difficult to perceive, not easy to perceive <laughs> this picture. It's very esoteric. <laughs> I <have> no hope. <clears throat> So seva unmukha, when Krishna sees seva unmukha, unmukha means e eagerness, and seva is a service. Basically, uh, here, uh, this is this attitude of service. Let me see, maybe I can, maybe I can try to... Uh, no. Is there some way to... You can change the font color. Like, uh, change what? Color. Now it's light green. So yes. Uh, so, is there a way to do the to do? Just click on, yeah, you just click on the text. And then but there it. are many texts. Yeah, there. Oops. Mm. You can do uh, Control A. Yeah, I did. I did, but. I, I did, but it, it's in different boxes. So therefore, it doesn't. Uh, where's color? Color. <coughs> anyway, it's supposed to be secret. Secret of all secrets. So, is it? Yeah, I, I think a little easier. So, <coughs> uh, in that verse, Rupa Goswami uses the word. Uh, uh, seva unmukha. Uh, unmukha, mukha, you know, the face, un means up. Unmukha. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, if uh, <coughs> Manohar Prabhu comes to you and says, Prabhu, we need uh, uh, this done, and you can do two things. You can do like this, you know, rise your face, or you can do like this. And uh, if you do like this, then what does it mean? It means I'm not very eager to do this, right? And if you do like this, it means, yes, I will do this. Please tell me. Prabhu, tell me. <laughs> right? So, unmukha in Sanskrit means uh, eagerness. And which eagerness? Seva. 
Sevo nuka. Sevo nuka hi, jihoda, beginning with the tongue. Of course, fortunately, it includes prashadam, so for that we are, yes, uh, uh, we have prashadam, yes. <laughs> so that, but also, of course, it's chanting, kirtan, speaking about Krishna, and so forth. <clears throat> but uh, we should remember, again, uh, seven mukha, it's the attitude. It's not just the service externally, <coughs> physically, the physical service itself. It includes the attitude or consciousness or mood. And then, uh, or in this definition, it is, uh, in this definition, this is anukulyena. This is the intent uh, to please Krishna. It's, this is your uh, goal, why we are doing this. So we begin at least by saying the words, okay, Krishna, this is for you. Okay, Krishna, I want to please you. We, at least we try to uh, offer this. But, uh, Ideally, this is the mood of doing everything. In fact, this is the essence of loving mood. This is the essence of love. That's what love means. That I'm happy to make you happy. I will be happy that you are happy. I want you to be happy. I want to make you happy. That's the main thing, Anukulyana. So this is why of all the parts, this is the most important part. I want to make you happy, Anukulyana. <coughs> of course, uh, we know what makes Krishna happy, but without this, Krishna needs nothing. So then, Svayameva Spurateda. Then, then he, from his side, he reveals. Did I finish that uh, about praying to Krishna? Yeah, I started praying to Krishna, and I saw, sort of immediately felt a certain connection. It's sort of like he, uh, he, uh, he they became beautiful. <laughs> they became very attractive. So he gave a little drop of. Uh, revelation from his side. So uh, that is the science of uh, bhakti, that uh, it is not just externally doing things, because external external is not, uh, I mean, it's super good, it's super pious, but you can see Hiranika Shipu, he's searching for Krishna, for Vishnu. He actually even meets Vishnu. He actually then uh, even uh, uh, pleases Narasimha by a good fight, giving him a good fight. So he serves uh, Narasimha. He pleases Narasimha. He pleases Narasimha because it, it is said that's why they came as, as Hiranika Shiva, because he wanted to fight. So they please him, they fulfill his desire. They fulfill the desire of, of Krishna. But uh, is that the type of uh, bhakti we want? Do we want to be like Hiranika Shipu? <laughs> uh, so obviously not. So um, <clears throat> it, it happens inside. It, it's, it's this mood of uh, deciding that yes, uh, I will be happy to, I, I'm happy to, to serve you, I'm happy to do something for you. So, and, and this is the practice, you can see, it's not again something that has to fall from the sky automatically. <clears throat> like many years ago, I told Niranjana Swami that, uh, Maharaj, I have uh, an idea. Uh, please tell me if it is a good idea. <clears throat> uh, I even remember very clearly it was in Odessa 2001. Hare Krishna. And uh, he, I, I told him that uh, I, I have an idea to develop a, a course for uh, helping devotees work with their uh, specific qualities. Do you think it's something that's uh, appropriate? Some, some workshop course or seminar for uh, developing or working or improving some of our qualities? And uh, Nirandana Maharaj said, yes, <laughs> very good. This is what we want because uh, it's a mistake to think that these qualities just come overnight without any uh, work from our side. It's not that in the evening you go to bed, uh, fall asleep, and then in the morning you wake up, uh, and then you look in the mirror and see, oh, I have become humble. Oh, look, I am uh, very detached. Uh, oh, look, I am I'm full of love. <laughs> it's just by overnight. Uh, falling from the sky. It's, it's practice. 
Sadhana means practice, and practice means repetition. But it's very subtle. It's a practice of uh, not the external movements, but using the external activity to achieve inner movement. And movement of what? Inner movement of what? Inner movement of my uh, goals. Inner movement of my motives. Inner movement of my attachments. Inner movement of my uh, identity. Who am I? And also this is why uh, bhakti is the most powerful, because uh, you, you go to the heart you, of, of everything, you decide, I am Krishna Das. Dasa Gopi Bhartu, Pada Kamala Yor, Dasa Dasa no Das. And this is supposed to be uh, the basis of bhakti. And this is why bhakti also <coughs> uh, can spiritualize all our activities. This is, in fact, how we are supposed to enter altar. So before entering altar, we have some Buddha Shuddhi mantras as uh, probably many of you know and use. And there is some traditional Buddha Shuddhi mantra <coughs> where you say, I'm not this uh, earth, I'm not this water. And there is uh, a very beautiful Buddha Shuddhi mantra. Buddha Shuddhi means purifying our <coughs> being, existence. And a very there is a very beautiful Buddha Shuddhi mantra from Gauranga Mahaprabhu where he says, Naha vipro nacha narapatir na vivaishyo na shudro na ham varni nacha griha patir no vanasto yatirva kintu pradyam nikila paramananda purnam ritabdher gopi bhartu adakamala yor dasa dasa nudasa. He says, I am not a um, Brahmana, but I am not a Kshatriya, but I am not a Vaishya, but I am not a Shudra. I am not a brahmachari, but I am not a grihastha, but also I am not a vanaprastha, but also I am not a sannyasi. So the whole varnashrama, all eight, <laughs> all eight uh, probable, possible uh, designations uh, denied. So what am I? And then he says, of the complete ocean of undiluted bliss, which is transcendental, and who is the uh, beloved lover of the gopis, of his lotus feet, of the servants, of the servants, of the servant, I'm a servant. <laughs> so that's who I am. Nothing, not something special, but a servant of a servant of a servant of the lotus feet of uh, Gopi Bharto. So <clears throat> this is uh, inner uh, adjustment. Inner adjustment, identity. We uh, dedicate Krishna to, to Krishna our uh, identity, ourself, and then uh, if we really did it well, then everything we do becomes offered automatically. If I am Krishna's uh, uh, dasa no das, then everything I do is for him. Hmm? So even things which are not maybe directly connected to him. So even, even your uh, duties, uh, you know, taking care of your body, cleaning and uh, taking care of your family and all the other things, uh, work, jobs, everything can be uh, uh, also done in service. Because you are a servant. As Gurmila Mataji was once answering how to offer your job to Krishna. She said that you can think that you are an undercover spy. That externally you are doing your work, but internally actually you are Krishna's servant. And <laughs> you, may, you may not reveal it externally, but actually you are Krishna's servant. We see in the introduction to the Gita, Prabhupada uses something similar. Actually it's from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakura. A very risque, a very uh, mm -hmm bold comparison. He says, it's like, uh, it's also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is speaking to Rupa and Sanadana, yes, in Chaitanya Charitamrita. He says, just like a, a woman who has a, a paramour, a lover, uh, to, hide it, to hide it, she will do her 
duties even house hold duties even more carefully, even more carefully, so that outside nobody will uh, have a suspicion. So in the same way, you perform your duties. So uh, <clears throat> inside, we cultivate the identity. I'm Krishna Seven, and uh, then uh, all the duties we do will be connected to to Seven Krishna. So. <clears throat> That's the power of, of bhakti. Anukulyana, that uh, I want to uh, please Krishna. So, uh, uh, did uh, any of you try to add this mood? Uh, because we discussed this, this, this is the fourth day we are discussing this. Uh, and anybody tried to add this mood to your uh, japa? Anybody tried to chant uh, at least once? Remembering Anukulyana, this, to add this intent? Who has tried? Yeah. Anybody try to see the deities, do something for, for Krishna's pleasure? Yes. Thank you. <clears throat> yes. So, uh, any, any realizations on, on trying to do this for Krishna? On any realizations on this Anukulyana? Generic. <laughs> Generic or specific, whatever. Sometimes? As a result. Yeah. Oh, so you get a response. Yeah, th th this, is th this is the uh, most amazing thing. Because this, this is the extreme power of bhakti. That when you do this, uh, if you find even for a half a second this drop of this mood, Krishna for you, I want to please you. Krishna responds, he takes. You offer, he takes. And you feel yoga, you feel connection. It's unique. And no other yoga. Other yogas take uh, decades and lifetimes to achieve this type of uh, experience or connection. But in bhakti yoga, you just offer, and Krishna says, oh, you want to offer? Thank you, please, give me. So, and, and this is in every, even if I'm not pure. Again, it's... Uh, important to emphasize, it's Anukulyana is the core of every bhakti, even not pure. So you can see, pure bhakti, sorry, pure bhakti is uh, are these uh, other two qualities, which are called tatasta. One is uh, Krishna is my goal, uh, ultimate goal, highest goal, and uh, Bhakti is my process. That's what makes bhakti, that's what makes bhakti pure. Uh, but every bhakti, uh, whether kevala or pradhanya or gona, three kind, three kinds of bhakti, uh, have, have they must have these three parts, anukulyana. And so you can see, even I'm not pure, but if I add this, if I add this, even a little, then uh, the magic of bhakti, the miracle of bhakti happens, I, even if I'm not pure. So basically. This is one thing, if, if we learn one thing from everything, if we do one thing from, from, from everything, so uh, this is the secret of all secrets, uh, to inside fi find this uh, intention, find this uh, attitude, Krishna for you, Krishna for you, because it can give us connection and, and it can give us uh, even, again, as I usually when you try to do, if you notice people who raise their ha hands, they smiled. You know, those who raise their hands, they smiled. <laughs> so that's the, the side effect of <laughs> trying to do this, offering this to Krishna. Yeah. Uh, some more, uh, maybe, realizations on this? Anukulyana? Yes? Fear that I cannot function in this world if I have this mood. <coughs> in other words, that I will uh, become too ecstatic, mad in love with Krishna. Yeah? Mm. Yo. It's a good fear.
<laughs> you won't have the same here. Yeah. <laughs> you won't have the same wind here. Uh -huh, wind. Yeah. You, you want to hear my comment on this here? Yeah. We see Raghunath Das Goswami wanted to drop his duties or family and join, join Goranga, join Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yes? And Chaitanya Mahaprabhu told him that uh, no, uh, stay in the family and do your duties. Or Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, he told him, go back to uh, Varanasi, I think he lived in, and please take care of your old uh, uh, parents because they are devotees. So he never married uh, Raghunath Bhatta Goswami, but he uh, uh, took care of his parents till their death. And then after they left the body, he moved to Vrindavan and he became one of the six Goswamis. Uh, so you can see this is the beauty of this mood because if you, uh, you know, this is how to never be wrong, basically. Do you sometimes have a, a need to make a decision, make a choice? Should I do this? Should, should I do this? Should I do that? Should I... Uh, make this choice or that choice. So, uh, how to decide? And this is the main uh, part of deciding. You decide uh, for Krishna. So, in other words, we find uh, we find all the egoistic, selfish uh, reasons why we could do this, and then uh, we offer this to Krishna. I say, okay, Krishna, I have this reason, that reason, that desire, this desire. I want uh, uh, um, money, wealth, profit, uh, 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 fame, uh, relationships, everything. Uh, what else? I mean, all the things. And, uh, or this thing, or that thing. Uh, but, and I think it's in your service, obviously. That's very useful for serving you. You will definitely uh, can use it for you. Uh, but... Uh, I will do this for you. I want to do this for your pleasure. I'm offering this for your pleasure. So, uh, in this case, even when you offer this for Krishna's pleasure, then even if it is wrong, it is right. Because uh, you have done it for Krishna's pleasure. Right? So therefore you get the bhakti result, not the kar karmic result. That's how you become free from karma. And, this is on one hand, on the other hand, because if you sincerely offer it to Krishna, Krishna will uh, adjust. If he thinks this is not what you need to do, like I mentioned Raghunath Bhatt Goswami and Raghunath Das Goswami, if he thinks this is not what you need to do, he will correct you. He will adjust. He will, uh, and it, he doesn't have to be personally standing in front of you to do this. He can do this from your heart, he can do this from books, from the altar, from uh, the, through the other devotees, through your guru, just through circumstances. Sometimes you already go, like you go to the train station and try to buy a ticket, and there is no ticket. And you have to uh, take the other choice. Sometimes, you know, if you really offer it to him, uh, he says, oh, you want to please me. Okay, so then just, not like this, but like that. He will help. So that's the true solution. So no worries, no worries. But uh, it, it's not that, that we become useless in the material world if we try to please Krishna. If we truly try to please Krishna, that's loving action. That's loving, uh, uh, lo loving life. And <clears throat> uh, being devotees, we don't have the problem of uh, using mater the material world. There is nothing that cannot be used for Krishna, Prabhupada says. In the Upadeshamrita, Prabhupada, Prabhupada says that the devotional service doesn't mean narrowing our, our activities. And uh, this is the uh, secret, how is it possible to chant Hare Krishna and to hear and, and understand Krishna. In the 10th canto, Parikshit Maharaj asks from Shukadev Goswami, how is it possible using the material tongue, the material ears, uh, the material uh, body, to he mind, to hear about Krishna and to serve Krishna. 
who is beyond matter. He's beyond Vyaktovia uh, Kta. He's beyond the beyond. So how is it, how, how is it possible to um, understand Krishna or approach Krishna uh, who is transcendental using material things? And Vishwanath Chakrati Thakur gives a very uh, important answer. Uh, he says, um, Budindriya mana pranam jananam asrijat prabhu matrartam cha bhavartam cha atmane kalpanaya cha. He says, uh, our intelligence, senses, all material things, mind, all, the, all these material things uh, are created uh, for uh, basically two purposes. One purpose is uh, matrartam, is to, uh, we, we, we call it enjoyment. In, in the Yoga Sutra, these two purposes are called bhoga and apavarga. Bhoga. Bhoga means, let, we usually think bhoga means enjoyment, but I think more uh, correct, more precise would be to translate it as experience. I think that's your experience that you try to enjoy, and then uh, instead of enjoyment, you get experience. Correct? <laughs> <laughs> I was had big plans. I will enjoy. I will enjoy like this. I will enjoy like that. And then as a result, uh, I get not the enjoyment, but experience. <laughs> so is, that's, that's the correct translation of the word bhoga or bhukti, experiencing. Experience. So we had this desire to uh, experiment life without Krishna, life as an enjoyer and controller, and he gives us this chance in the material world. So that's one purpose of this world. To uh, Krishna hides, we don't see Krishna, you can see uh, Hirani Kashipu cannot find him, <coughs> and we can experiment with our experience. But uh, this same world, same elements, the tongue, the ears, the eyes, everything, have the inbuilt secret function, secret for uh, the materialists, to give you, uh, to connect you with Krishna. It's present also. All matter has this, all material elements have this inbuilt function. If some of you uh, know programming, uh, you, you may know sometimes they, they call it Easter eggs. There are some places, like on your phone or on your computer, there are some places you click something or you do a certain sequence of comments and then uh, a special thing comes out, like greetings to my family or something, you know, some. A hidden feature, hidden feature that not everybody knows. So, uh, same with this world. Uh, it looks like this is a material world, like this is matter, but it has a hidden feature. All these material elements can <coughs> connect us to Krishna. They can reveal, lead us to Krishna. <coughs> Prabhupada uses the example of We don't need AC here, do we? There's no air conditioning here. We are we in have such a climate here, so we don't <laughs> Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is the example, Shila, but we have fridge. Okay, we have fridges in the kitchen. So Prabhupada gives the example electricity. It can be used for heating or it can be used for uh, cooling. One energy, opposite functions. So Prabhupada says also maya or matter. It can disconnect or it can connect, depending on your uh, purpose and motives. In this second canto, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says that all the material elements are Vaishnavas. He says, devotees do not hate maya because she is a Vaishnavi. And 2.753, it says, if you study maya in connection with Krishna, uh, then Maya will not put you in illusion. <laughs> so this is why we have so much discussion of creation, universal form. I mean, this is Hirane Kashipu's problem. He didn't read uh, the first seven cantos or something. <laughs> he didn't study the universal form. Because the sun, the moon, the earth, these are all energies of Krishna. Sun is the eye of Krishna, Krishna and so forth. So, uh, therefore, you can use uh, things in the material world for service of Krishna. And, you, and, and do, it, do it with, uh, with love for Krishna. Right? 
Like, do you think Srila Prabhupada, when he was working in his pharmacy, do you think he forgot Krishna? Do you think he was not a pure devotee? Do you think he was in Maya? Like, okay, in the morning chanting he was not in Maya, but in the shop he was in uh, matter. No. He was in Krishna consciousness. And for decades he was trying to engage, uh, he was trying to use it to spread Krishna consciousness. Ba basically he supported uh, Prayag, he opened the temple in Prayag, Allahabad. Uh, he supported Bombay, the Bombay Godiamat. And he, uh, so, uh, and fr from his books we see that he's uh, uh, consciously doing his material duties in Krishna consciousness. I think there is early book in Bengali, Renunciation Through Wisdom. Renunciation Through Wisdom, yeah? Buddha Yoga. Uh, renunciation Through Wisdom. So basically you act in the material world, but you do this for Krishna. So that's uh, the advanced trick of Krishna consciousness, that uh, you can do, <coughs> act in the material world also for, also for Krishna. Is it okay? Okay, so this is a... Um, task of engaging everything in, in Krishna consciousness, and then we can avoid the predicament of Hiranyakashipu, who uh, went to Vaikuntha and couldn't find Krishna, and he declares, uh, God is dead. <laughs> God is dead. And then uh, he has to meet Narasimha face to face, and still he cannot recognize. Still he cannot recognize God. That's why he has to take birth again as uh, Ravana. And still he couldn't recognize Ram as God. That's why he has to take birth again as Shishupal. And then Krishna kills him and then he's free. So this is uh, Krishna Sandarbha saying that this is a unique glory of Krishna. Uh, other Vishnu avatars, if they uh, kill, they give liberation to demons if the demon uh, realizes that this is God. Then the demon gets liberated. But if they don't, then they have to take birth again. Like Hiranyaka Shipu, he takes birth again as Ravana, very powerful, very opulent, so he has a lot of um, material blessings, but not liber liberation. It's only Krishna who, who gives freedom to all the demons, whether they recognize him as God or not. That's one of the unique uh, powers and glories of, of Krishna, that he liberates everybody, always, whether, whether they understand or not. <clears throat> However, this is the uh, second of the three uh, essential elements of uh, bhakti, Krishna. Krishna, that we serve the transcendental, all attractive, Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is the Absolute Truth. In the, introdu in the introduction, or is it the first verse of the Bhagavatam Prabhupada says, there is a difference between the concepts of the Supreme Law of God and uh, uh, Absolute Truth. So uh, when poor chap Friedrich Nietzsche says, God is dead, yeah, uh, he speaks about God, which we also do not think is uh, the description of God. He had basically, uh, he, he himself, uh, our Kalakanta Prabhu, Srila uh, <coughs> Prabhupada disciple who translates into, he published Gita in, the, in verses and the Bhagavatam in, in verses. So for the 10th canto he chose Nietzsche's quote who says, that if I were to accept God, it, sh it should be God who uh, knows how to dance and laugh. So here he is. <laughs> Krishna, everywhere, every description of Krishna, every description of Vishnu, he is smiling. Even Kurma is smiling. It says, a beautiful smile. I don't know how, I mean, this is... <laughs> Every description, he's smiling or laughing or some humor is there. He's laughing and dancing. Krishna is dancing, Goranga is dancing. So poor Chet Nietzsche didn't you know, last long enough. So, so what he denied, he denied basically some already, how to say, mm, I don't want to insult anybody. 
how to what, what's a, how to, already a devolved um, limited concept of God, limited concept of God, presented as just some some supreme angry judge, uh, critical, sadistic, uh, compulsive, nervous, and uh, uh, infer some inferiority complex or something. So that's not God. <laughs> yeah. So uh, Hirani Kashipu has a big misconception about God. So also as devotees, it's important for us to not have misconceptions that Krishna is uh, an angry, sadistic judge <laughs> who is out just watching. Did you watch your? Did you do this? Did you? What did you? <gasps> What did you think? What did you think? Aha! No, gotcha! <laughs> and then, let, let, just wait, I will show you. <laughs> that's not Krishna, that's not even Paramatma. No, even Paramatma is always smiling. You see every description, every canto. Even Paramatma is always smiling. That's the dhyan for our japa. For every mantra, there is a dhyan. What's, what is the form you are meditating upon? And for, for uh, it's given for the Maha Mantra, the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, Dhyanchandra Goswami, uh, grand disciple of Gopal Guru, who has been called Guru by Goranga uh, because he taught, he instructed uh, Nimai Pandit to always chant the holy name. So he's an expert in the holy name. So his grand disciple gives a dhyan. How, what's the meditation for chanting Hare Krishna Maha Mantra? Uh, you, you know this uh, meditation? Dhyaye Vrindavana Ramye Gopa Gopila Lankrite Kadamba Padabatale Yamuna Jala Shitale Radhaya Radhaya Sahitam Krishnam Vam Shivala Natatkaram Tribangalaritam Devam Bhakta Nudraha Karakam So he says, uh, please meditate, one must meditate. So for, for Hare Krishna chanting, you please uh, have a picture have a meditation, Dayat, Dayat. Vrindavan Ramye, in the charming Vrindavan, not, uh, I mean, I will, I will not go in. in. In the charming Vrindavan, uh, on the bank of uh, cool Yamuna, under uh, the shade of wonderful Kadamba tree, who smelled Kadamba flowers? You remember the smell of the Kadamba flowers? It's a very gentle, uh, elegant, cooling uh, smell, which somehow reminds me of uh, cucumbers a, a little bit, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Some tinge of <laughs> that, but it's cooling. For the summer, it's very good. And uh, under the under the kadama tree, uh, in, so <laughs> surrounded by the mm, gopis. Uh, Gopa, Gopi, uh, along, de no, decorated with the Gopis, ornament, decorated with the Gopis. Uh, Radhaya Sahitam with Radharani, uh, <clears throat> Vamshi Vadana with the flute, long flute, Vamshi, long flute at his uh, uh, lotus face and very dedicated to Radharani. And uh, in a threefold bending, uh, posture, bhakta nugraha, and very merciful to devotees, or to a devotee. So this is the meditation. It's a meditation on a on a very merciful Krishna, on on Krishna who is very merciful. It's not Krishna who doesn't have time for you, who is busy, who is uh, cruel, who is uh, critical or something. This is the meditation for the Hare Krishna Mahamantra. Bhakta Anugra, uh, Krishna is merciful to uh, devotees. So this is what, uh, so he's our friend, again, as we discussed yesterday. This is w what keeps me in the material world, thinking that Krishna is cruel and thinking that Krishna is unfair. That Krishna is unfair. Cruel and unfair. That's the, uh, the lock locking the door from, from the material world. So just taking that Krishna is fair, not only to him and her, but also to me. Not only that, even more, he's, he's kind. 
He's very kind. He's my friend. He's the best friend. So if you know he's the best friend, he's the best friend. You know everything. You're a professor. You can teach everybody. Krishna is my friend. And also, this is, uh, uh, and this is also the mood which helps us to uh, direct Anukulyana, this uh, intention to please, to please Krishna. If he's my friend, if he's my friend, I want to, I want to do something for him. Do you give presents to your friends? When you visit your friends, do you give some presents to your friends? Do you tell them sweet words, good words? I mean, even if you tell them uh, harsh words, that's usually just to, to, to make fun and to please them also, right? So that's friendly, friendly relationships. So Krishna is our friend. Krishna is merciful. Also, Krishna is Krishna means Krishna and his devotees. So therefore, it's important how we uh, interact. And also, one of the four offenses which block our advancement in Krishna consciousness, according to Bhakti Yonat Thakur, uh, is offenses even to ordinary living entities. He, mentioned, he lists four offenses. And one of the four offenses which can prevent our advancement is uh, chitkana, means uh, offending any living entities. Any, any living entity, not, not even the... Vaishnava Parad, it's, it's separate. Nama Parad, it's another one. Uh, Seva Parad, service to the deities, it's, it's a, another one. But even any, any jiva, that also can, if you are not kind, or, or if, you are, if you are cruel, or if you offend, that also can block our advancement. <laughs> Huh? Oh. <laughs> so, uh, if we know that this is the object of our worship, Krishna. Krishna is beautiful, Krishna is kind, Krishna is my friend. Krishna is her friend and his friend also. And Krishna is also uh, in everybody's heart, everybody is Krishna's temple. And Krishna loves his devotees very much. So with this, and, and Krishna uh, is present everywhere, and everything is his uh, energy, and therefore even material elements are Vaishnavas. So in, in, with this understanding and uh, with, uh, with the intention, then if we, if we act like this, then it will be much more uh, easy to avoid any uh, conflicts or offenses. And uh, by Anukulyana, we can experience connection. We can experience connection very, uh, very quickly. Maybe we can inspire Krishna to reveal himself. So that's absolute truth. This is what Hiranika Shipu doesn't understand. That's why, that's why he cannot find him. He cannot find Vishnu. And he's angry at, angry at Vishnu. Looking in, in some external places without... He didn't, he didn't study Bhakti Shastri. You know? He didn't study the Bhagavatam with Prabhupada's commentaries. <laughs> so, <clears throat> may Krishna be pleased with our activities. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Thank you very much. Some last comments? Questions? Points? Is there a question? You, you mentioned about this uh, knowledge of Krishna being not cruel, just. Mm -hmm. So, but in what point it is if you, anyways, think of Krishna even in that? Not very positive way. Can we say it's like he's material? He's material. If we are ang angry at Krishna. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I would I say. Was thinking of Krishna always, so not favorable, but still, it's like thinking of Krishna. So, is the question about Kamsa or about us? Because us. <laughs> us. Okay. So, <clears throat> uh, being angry at Krishna is the. Uh, status quo is the natural 
condition of every conditioned soul. We uh, have found, we, we find fault with Krishna. That, that's the idea of being envious of Krishna, right? <clears throat> uh, so this is the status quo of everybody in the material world. We, we, uh, some kind of uh, bigger or lesser hostility, hostility, enmity to Krishna. So therefore, uh, when a devotee uh, admits that I am angry at Krishna, that's already a positive step because it means that I, I uh, at least recognize uh, where I am. I bring it uh, into the open. Instead of it being unconscious, I make it conscious. And then, if it's conscious, I can do something about it. So that's like uh, once somebody uh, asked uh, Burijan Prabhu, I, I feel angry at, Krish uh, at Krishna. So then he said, okay, then go to the temple, go to Krishna Balaram, and uh, tell them that you're angry at them. Explain why, pray to them, e express it, you tell them, you know, admit this to them. And uh, so then you, you can already uh, do, deal with this, you, you can uh, process it. So this anger, you come to Krishna, you say, oh, I, I feel like this, like this. And then because you have come to Krishna and you want to be a devotee, then Krishna can help. And Krishna can do, some, can, can do something about it. It's uh, on, on one hand, uh, once it's in the open, we can do something, and uh, if it's uh, brought to Krishna, then uh, we are asking Krishna for help, so he can help us. It was, it was more like in a, in a sense of material, of being material, since there's one point of vision and we see everything spiritual, but there's lower spiritual and higher spiritual. Material is world we create. Like we live in material, but they are like um, philosophical statement. There is no material world. This because everything is in the Krishna. There is in Vanda. Yes. So why we use the, the material world is like we live in a world where there is no Krishna. That would be material. And if we recognize the Krishna, then it's not material anymore. It's Spiritual, maybe not favorite, but it's spiritual, or, or it's not. For, for demons, yes, if they <coughs> confront Krishna directly, they, uh, <coughs> if they think about Krishna in any way, they get uh, some mm, purification or some, some... I mean, it's offensive, but it, it connects them to Krishna. So what's the result? The result is that they suffer for the offense, but they also uh, will be helped to uh, approach Krishna, to be, be dragged towards Krishna. And uh, we have many stories that if Krishna killed demons, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, uh, instead of killing demons, he uh, kills their demonic mentality. And there are so many stories about devotees who used to uh, act demoniacally. They would uh, attack devotees, they would trample the books, they would uh, te tear, tear up the books, uh, they would persecute devotees, but then uh, they became devotees themselves. So somehow or other they became purified and then they became uh, devotees. So yes, there is this uh, positive, positive effect. So any, any touch with Krishna, any connection with Krishna is better than no connection with Krishna. So in that sense, yes. So <clears throat> In that sense, also, uh, in obviously, Kamsa and all the other demons, they get uh, at least liberation. And sometimes even personal liberation, not in person. Some of them, got, they even get personal liberation. <coughs> but uh, if, you are, if you are speaking about uh, devotees, about ourselves, and then feeling angry, then yes, I think this is also the idea of what Burijan Prabhu said, that uh, turn it into Krishna consciousness, that uh, come to Krishna and admit it to Krishna. <clears throat> and then that helps us to, to remember Krishna. Of course, we want to not be angry at Krishna, but to be loving, loving to love Krishna. So uh, that's the question of uh, accepting Krishna's uh, decision. That's the question of surrendering, surrendering to Krishna. Yeah. Okay.
So one more question and then <coughs> It's uh, available in many places on the internet, but uh, I can uh, just uh, I can just uh, send you or put it some and give it to you. Please, please. Is it possible also to send it back, which will project the It's a little long. I can, yeah, but I think he needs to take the projector. I can, I can uh, send it to you. Maybe you can send it away with the American. Yeah, wherever you can send it. Send it to me, I will send it to the community. Yeah, okay, I will send it to the Northern Menu. Most of the verse. Most of the verse. The verse. Most of the verse, the meditation, the audio chanting. Yeah, yeah. So the center verse and, uh, and translation. Yes. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> send the meditation. <laughs> that, that, no, that, that, that you send <laughs> blessings that I can meditate. Shri Radha Gopinath Ki Jai, Skala Desh Ki Jai, Nidai Gopramanande. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.